uh, and women. We're going to um, tighten the schedule a little bit so it'll go from the student athletes right to the head coach as opposed to the timeline that you probably have received. Silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media, media affiliation when asking questions. A uh, limit of one follow-up and raise your hand whether in person or on the Zoom. For the Texas Tech Red Raiders, student athletes are Adonis Arms and Davian Warren. And uh, please make sure you raise your hand, we'll find you and open it up for questions for the student athletes. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Uh, I have two questions, one for Adonis. We were talking to Bryson the other day, and he was saying when you come to Texas Tech, how difficult at first to, it is to learn this defensive philosophy. I guess, was there a moment for you where you're like, man, this is kind of unique, this is this is difficult and hard to kind of really learn? Yeah, when I first got here, I didn't know what Coach Adams was talking about. I thought he was speaking a different language when he was like, force him side, no middle, and you got a trap on the baseline if I say so, one dribble or you're going with no dribble. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but Coach Adams, what I heard before I even got to Texas Tech was he was the guru of defense. So whatever he was saying had to be right because Texas Tech was good. And then Davian, um, how would you describe Mark Adams' defensive philosophy to someone who hasn't lived it, experienced it? Uh, like Adonis said, uh, Coach Adams is a guru for defense. So, you know, growing up playing basketball, you don't really work on defense. You pretty much work on, like, your offensive skill. So uh, just coming to uh, Coach Adams and learning different uh, defensive techniques. And, you know, uh, our defense is pretty much a team effort. So, you know, what Coach Adams says, it, it pretty much works. John Titel from HoopsHD.com for either of you. Um, you've played against some great three-point shooters this year, like uh, Kansas and Baylor come to mind. When you play a guy like Cormac Ryan, who's coming in making seven threes against Alabama yesterday, what sort of things do you do on defense to try to limit him? Uh, I mean, Davion already said it. It's a, it's a team effort. Uh, we got to force him to do things that he's not as comfortable with. Like, he's a great shooter. And, like, yesterday he went seven from nine from three, hit some crazy threes. I mean, we just got to try to eliminate those as much as possible and force him to do other things that maybe he's not as great as, but he's, he's definitely a great shooter. Mason Horodisky with KMAC News back in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, kind of for both of you guys, Notre Dame's also a team that's made up of a lot of veteran senior leadership. Have you guys been able to kind of draw comparisons between some of the seniors that the Fighting Irish have? Uh, I know. I, I think we're kind of different than Notre Dame. I think we're probably a little bit more athletic. And, you know, I, I don't know them as a whole, but I think, you know, we're probably more of a family than those guys are. We are brothers. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure they, those guys are brothers, but I think uh, – it's going to come down to a tough battle tomorrow. And that's a pretty good team over there at Notre Dame. Uh, kind of a follow-up, I guess, on that. How do you guys feel like you've been able to gel so quickly together with having so many people coming into this program some, from so many different walks of life in college basketball? Uh, we pretty much all, you know, been a nobody at some point of our careers. And, uh, you know, now we're starting to become players inside this college uh, basketball world. And, you know, even off the court, we all hang out. We all do everything together. So we never leave each other behind. So even on the court, you, you will always see us. Like, whenever one of my brothers fall, we, we always sprint to go pick him up. Ariel Schaefer, KLBK, back in Lubbock. Davion, this is your first dance trip to the big dance. So kind of comment on the experience so far, especially with the way that you guys came out yesterday. Uh, it's fun. Adonis just asked me this before we walked in here. I told I told him my, for my first experience, I'm already 1-0. So... Uh, I don't plan on losing anytime soon, so it's going good so far. Carlos Silva from the Lovick Avalanche Journal for both of you all, Adonis and Davion. Had a good performance yesterday, but how do you kind of stack that and make sure that you're consistent and you continue to do that going into Sunday? Well, the game that we played is over with, so it's next game up, one game at a time mentality. I mean, we got a great team coming in, Notre Dame. I mean, they're in the first four, and they're a really good team, shooting the ball, attacking. Um, scoring inside so we just got to focus on what we got tomorrow and, and do the best we can and eliminate them and advance in this tournament uh, yeah. yeah piggyback what Adana said uh, just eliminate them and you know really focus on defense uh, you know with this team we have anybody can go off on this team so we're not really worried about offense we worried about locking them up Adonis um, Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune you guys always play defense. Tech's been known for defense. None of that surprises anybody. But when you can score 
as a team the way you did the other night, how does that change things in terms of how tough it is to match up with you guys when, when you're playing that well offensively too? I think we're a really tough team to beat when we're, we're playing the defense that we can play. And we have, like Davion said, unlimited firepower from anybody that can go off and score like that. I think that we're a really hard team to, to play against and to scout, in my opinion. When we can score like that and play defense the way we do, I think we're just a really, really hard team to beat. Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. Um, all four teams that are playing on Sunday have had fan bases travel really well. What kind of environment are you expecting, and how important is fan support as you guys move on in the tournament? No, this Red Raider Nation, they travel, man. Like, they travel. So I think we're going to have our family with us. Wherever we go, however far we go, we're going to have Red Raider Nation right behind us. Yeah, what Adana said, you know, Red Raiders have uh, been behind us since day one. You know, they've been supporting us. Uh, you know, we did a very special thing by not losing in Lubbock. So, you know, they're going to support us all the way. Uh, Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. Adonis, you guys have accomplished a lot as a program over the last few years, and, and especially this year. But what's left to prove? It seems like you guys feel like there's still a little bit of a chip there that's got to be removed. What, what are you guys out to do here? Oh, we out to win the whole thing. <laughs> that's why we're here, right? March Madness, we, we're here to win the whole thing. I mean, I, I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Adams, our coaching staff, everybody behind the scenes. And I believe we can do it if we just stick to what Coach Adams preaches to us every day, continue to work hard, believe in each other, believe in yourself. You never know what will happen. And this is March Madness. It's the craziest time. As, as a follow-up, what is the chip though? Like, what is, what what fuels you guys? We are we are underdogs. We've been underdog our whole life, so it's time to prove ourselves that we belong at this stage. <clears throat> like, I've been to junior college. Adonis been to a Division two and junior college. Most of us been at lower Division ones. So we haven't been recruited. We weren't these five star kids. We're ready to prove that we belong. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. On, on that note, for both of you, just well, how does it feel to actually, I mean, when you think about your journey for both of you to go from junior college to make it all the way to here to, to be playing in the tournament, you know, what would you kind of tell yourself back in junior college? You know, what kind of emotions come through? Uh, I'll just say, you know, never stop believing in God, never stop working, uh, don't quit. Uh, you never know what's around the corner. Um, I mean, if you quit, you have no chance of making it this far anyway. So why stop on your dreams when you can just keep working and eventually get there? So I was just tell my younger self, keep working. Yeah, just keep working. Uh, stay with the course. There's going to be bad games. There's going to be great games. There's going to be bad practices. There's going to be great practices. You know, you just got to stay, stay level-headed, never get too high, never get too low, and just believe in yourself at all times. Carlos of Lubbock Avalanche Journal. For both of you all, just uh, – Going back to that fan base, I know a couple of your teammates had some parents, family members in the stands. How much does that fuel uh, you all when you have the people that have kind of watched your journey, especially a Bryson Williams, who certainly has been a leader for you all? And not only that, but then just uh, can you kind of speak to the emotions personally and then just for your teammates when you see people like that, what, when you guys had senior night and then now with Bryson having his family and some other guys as well like Buzo? Uh, I think for I'll speak for myself first. I always I always call my mom, and my sister, my superheroes. So for them to see my journey from when I was at Mesa Community College and I'm at Texas Tech in the second round of March Madness is it's surreal. I mean, I never would have thought that I would even be at Texas Tech to be honest with you. But um, just seeing them in the stands cheering me on, cheering my teammates on, and a guy like Bryson that's always working in the morning and just a straight dog really to see his family in the stands cheering him on and him still doing his thing, killing is is crazy. I mean, like, he's a great player. To see his family cheering him on and Red Raider Nation behind us cheering us on is a beautiful thing. Um, my family personally uh, are back home right now, and I know for sure that they're watching, but Red Raider Nation and all my teammates' families that involved is, is considered my family, so that's how I look at it. Um, for both of you to the left. Um, Give name and affiliation. Oh, sorry, okay. again? Okay, Bryce Miller, San Diego Union Tribune. Um, when you're playing defense as well as you can as a team in a game do you see other teams can you tell their gas do you see something in their eyes is there anything where you can see kind of the demoralizing result of them trying to play against that defense for a whole game I mean we just focus on ourselves and, and playing a, a full 40 minutes we don't really focus on the other team if they're 
gassed or tired or anything like that. We just focus on us and what we have to do to play the best defense we can and follow in Coach Adams' footsteps. Yeah, like he said, we just worry about ourselves. We don't really care if they're gassed or not gassed. We want them at their full strength, so there's no excuses. Uh, Eamon Brennan, The Athletic. You guys talked about, um, particularly Adonis, not imagining that you'd be here. When you were in community college, was there a particularly difficult moment in your career or times when you wouldn't have been able to um, foresee yourself, not just at this level, but progressing in your career? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's ups and downs to anybody's journey. I mean, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know how to. I just think, like, when you're in JUCO, it's a, a worldwide thing that that's, like, where the dogs are. Like, if you make it out of JUCO, you can make it anywhere. Um, I was told that I was a diamond in the rough when I was at Mason Community College and never to quit. So, I mean, for the people that were supporting me back then to now, I just think I just thank them for never giving up on me and continuing to tell me that I have, like, a bright future and I'm really good at basketball and stuff like that to actually, like, keep me going. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Yes, sir. Done. Thank yes, sir. You.
Reminder to everyone, silence your cell phones, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Limit of one follow-up, raise your hand, whether it's uh, in person or on the Zoom. We have with I us need you coaching my team. You're good at this. You defend better. <laughs> uh, bringing in Texas Tech Red Raiders head coach Mark Adams, and he'll open things up with a statement. You're so excited to make it through the first round, and uh, we've got an uh, opponent that's um, got a lot of experience, won a lot of games, a team that um, has a lot of, a lot of momentum, uh, winning, these, uh, winning two games this last week playing with tremendous confidence and uh, have a great coach and Coach Bray. So uh, we got our hands full, but we're excited about the challenge. Uh, Mason Hordesky with KMAC News back in Lubbock. Coach, last time Notre Dame and Texas Tech played was all the way back in 1976. You were still a student at Texas Tech. I was just wondering if you happen to remember that game. Are you going to bring up my age? <laughs> uh, I actually don't remember that game. but. Um, but I remember uh, Notre Dame winning a lot of games. You know, their their team I've watched and uh, I've studied Coach Bray's team. He's been there over 20 years and was an assistant with, uh, at Duke. And uh, for Coach K, and great offensive mind, has a great relationship with his players. So he's been one of the guys that's I've always felt like was kind of a mentor to me and a guy I'd read about and watch what he does and has done in the past. Great coach. And then. Uh Kind of looking towards, obviously, tomorrow now. Notre Dame, you kind of touched upon it, is a team that's already played two games in this tournament. I guess what are some of the pros and cons of playing a team that's had that extra game and might be a little bit more battle-tested in the tournament so far? Yeah, you can look at it a couple of ways. But uh, we, we, they're, they're experienced, and they've, again, um, every time you win, you've, you're more invested. And they've, um, um, they've had some tough games and shows that they're a tough team, resilient team. And uh, a lot of leadership, great coaching, and really good players. And, uh, and most importantly, they're playing with a lot of confidence. Dane O'Neill with The Athletic. Mark, your players consider themselves underdogs. That's how they value themselves. How much does that play into how you guys play with your defense? I mean, that mentality, how much does it feed the way that they just defend? Because not everybody likes to defend. <laughs> well, I resent that a little bit. So. <laughs> Well, you know, we have an identity, and that's defense. And our guys certainly have bought into it. We have great guys, that um, players that understand how important defense is. And, you know, as a coach, it's challenging to get some teams, some players to, to uh, understand how important it is to, to guard them on, on one end and to go down and score and, and uh, be unselfish. And, but so many of our players came from humble beginnings, and, and they've had a, some uh, – uh, difficult times even getting here. I mean, there, uh, you know, there's so many great stories of these guys and how uh, people gave up on them. They didn't give up on themselves. And, and uh, a lot of these transfers are, are uh, they've got a lot of scars and, and uh, they're tough people. And they've got a dream of getting to the national championship and winning it. And certainly proud that I get an opportunity to coach these guys. Carlos Silva, Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Coach, you alluded to some of those transfers. Can you speak to Adonis and what he brings to this team just from an outside perspective, not on the ball? Because obviously everyone kind of knows what type of player he is, but what kind of person is he based on his journey as, as you've kind of seen with your journey going JUCO, college ranks, kind of all those? Yeah, he's one of those that yeah, started out in junior college. I think he was a walk-on, had to prove himself, and then um, on to Division two and then Division one and but he's a guy that's uh, been the player at, at a, supple, a couple of the uh, programs. And then uh, at Winthrop, I think he was more of a, I mean, well, he, he was a sixth man, but unbelievable sixth man. And that's, that's uh, a, a lot of uh, kind of the personnel of our team. We've had a lot of these guys that uh, were the player, and they come in here, and, and they're part of the pack, and they trust and believe in that. But Adonis, unbelievable personality. Always has a smile on his face. It's contagious. Everybody loves him, and he's grown a lot as a player uh, in that he's he's much more disciplined at taking shots. And we've had to move him over to the point guard spot and, at times, and you know, he just wants to win. And really, really proud of his improvement and the progress he's made over the, the last uh, three months. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Um, Danny Sprinkle from Montana State was blown away at just the sheer size and athleticism of your defenders. When you're, when you're looking to recruit a defender, 
what is kind of the typecast? So, you know, what are you really looking for? And I guess what does it say that you were able to find all these guys from humble beginnings like junior colleges that, and, you know, other places? Yeah, well, I, I, I said this before, but I, and I, I think it stole it off of a, a, a movie, um, The Miracle on Ice, the, the movie that the guy talks about, he didn't recruit the, maybe the, the very best players, but he recruited the right guys and the right players. And, and all the way through here, we've done our due diligence and worked on trying to find guys that would buy into uh, being coached and, and had the uh, uh, great reputation of being good people and uh, playing hard and and uh, it starts with that right there. If you got a guy that wants to be coached and coached hard, then you're a very fortunate head coach and I'm, I'm very blessed and lucky to be able to coach these guys and it starts with that and we've got guys that have size and length and that certainly helps when you're putting to, uh, together a defensive team. So I, I, it starts uh, with character and the toughness, and then along with that, we like to we like the athleticism and size. Don't really have the shot blocker like we had back with Tariq Owens back uh, several years ago. But these guys take charges and and uh, sacrifice their body, get on the floor, and understand if they play hard, they got a chance to win. Um, Ariel Schaefer, KLBK, back in Lubbock. Coach, we just talked to Davion about this being his first time to the big dance, Bryson too. Just from your perspective as a coach, seeing them so excited to be here for the first time through your eyes, what does that mean to you? Yeah, those guys are special because this is their first time and, and they've worked extremely hard to get here and our, our entire team is happy for these guys and, and that they get to, um, to, sh to share this experience with them. And, and, and it's such a, until you, you've been here and been in this NCAA tournament, it is really hard to describe the emotion, uh, the satisfaction of being in a tournament and winning and even being here and, and all the things that go with it with the interviews and, and uh, being in the spotlight. And, and, and they, uh, they've enjoyed it and they appreciate it at the same time. I, those two guys uh, kept it all in perspective and know they got to keep winning and not let these distractions uh, uh, hinder their performance or the team. So we've got a very mature group. We've got a lot of experienced guys, and that's that's certainly helpful. Hi, Coach. Uh, Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune. Everyone knows what you guys are capable of defensively, but when you score like you did the other night, um, when you pair those two things together so effectively, uh, wh how does that change uh, potential, ceiling, whatever you want to call it? Well, we weren't really planning on scoring that many points. There were just so many naysayers saying we couldn't score. We just thought we'd pr prove a point and try to get to 100. I think we scored more points than anybody in the tournament. So, but uh, even though we rely on defense, uh, you, you got to have it. I've always said that you, your offense can knock somebody out, and you need to be able to score. And proud of our guys for doing that. And I wish I could just bottle that up, and we can, uh, you know, have it for tomorrow as well. But uh, uh, sharing the ball, we had 23 assists and. So that kind of reinforces to our guys, we, we got to just share the ball and have good spacing. But we had six guys in double figures, and, and that's not how it's been all year. We've always had someone. Bryce has been our one guy that's been really consistent. We've always there's been someone along the way that would help us win a game coming off the bench and, and making big plays for us. Do you notice, and if so, how late in games, the, the wear and tear on other teams against your defense? Uh, you know, do you see it in their eyes? Do you see it in their legs? Do you? Do you notice what that does to the other two opponents when you play defense at, at the top level? Well, we try to sell that. You know, that that's what we would try to do. And um, kind of the old boxing mentality, we'd hope we can get guys where they just want to throw in the towel and we wear them down and we substitute a lot. So, you know, that's the plan. On, when you get to this level and, and when playing the best in the country, that may not be as, wouldn't be as true, but uh, that's been kind of our mentality, and that certainly has worked for us uh, over the, uh, over this past season. Coach uh, Troy Hirsch with uh, Fox 5 San Diego. With the one day you have to prepare for Notre Dame, without going too deep into X's and O's, what do you focus on most in this preparation day? Well, that three-point line. You know, they're 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 so good at shooting threes and. That's always the very first thing I look at at box scores and when I'm scouting a team is, and um, I go to the three-point line, who can shoot threes and who can't, and they got a bunch of three-point shooters. So um, certainly a sleepless night for me last night and a lot, lot, of, lot of worry to try to find ways to find those guys in transition. And uh, uh, they've got a lot of great sets to get those guys open. So 
our team understands that we've got a huge challenge with uh, with guarding them in the three point line because we have so many three point shooters. And then, Coach, uh, there was a, a big players were talking about being underdogs, but th it seemed like Notre Dame has a, a big fan base here, whether they've traveled or they're just local. And uh, you may be coming in as a, a maybe the villain, so to speak, as the higher now, seed. Wait a second. Well, I just everybody loves the underdog in the tournament. I'm wondering if you'll use that to, and, and mention that to your players before the game. Yeah, well, we you know we we played that role many times, and uh, we've been in some hostile environments and. Uh, you know, we've, um, we, you know, there's a lot of, you know, we go to Kansas and um, Iowa State. There's a lot of great um, uh, uh, fan bases and and um, played a lot of great against great players, guys that are future NBA players. And so, but you know, this is still a neutral game. We're uh, we're going to play our best and and uh, we love the, you know, we love playing in front of big crowds. Our guys responded really well to it. And I think every game we've been in. So I think they they enjoy the pressure and and uh, the excitement of that. This side. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. I wanted to ask about O'Banner. Um, he averaged 10 and 5 this year, but he's now had four NCAA tourney games and four double doubles. How is about it, that? That's great. Is yeah. it just something that he's a special kid who knows how to rise to the occasion when the lights are brightest or something? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think first thing, he's just a great competitor. And um, he's, he, he wants to keep this team alive and knows how important it is to do whatever he can to do that, and he's been one of our best offensive rebounders, and made big shots for us. And his in defense, his defense has just really improved. So he's he wants to do whatever he, it takes to be on the floor and uh, get those minutes to help us win, and then find ways to win. Uh, Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. Uh, going off an earlier question, uh, it seems like all four teams playing on Sunday, uh, their fan bases have traveled really well. What kind of environment are you expecting, and how important is fan support um, as you advance in the tournament? Well, you just look back at our um, at our home record. We're you know we're undefeated and 18 and 0, um, and we've had um, great fan support. The Red Raider Nation has always followed us, and so uh, we expect a big crowd here and. And uh, you know, having fans support you and be behind you it means a lot. To, uh, as, from a coach's perspective, it helps me uh, get these guys fired up and keep them going for 40 minutes. And, and the guys certainly appreciate it. And, and yeah, well, we should have a, a great showing of Red Raider fans here tomorrow. Coach Levon Whitaker with ABC 57 in South Bend. As a matchup here, it's between offensive-minded and defensive-minded teams. Who's the one guy that you're particularly in, in particular that you're you know trying to shut down tomorrow? You can look at uh, uh, the guy that dropped 29 points yesterday, but you can also try to find out who's going to be have the hot hand tomorrow. Well, who's the offensive mind? Who's the defensive mind? That's uh, I, I certainly wouldn't want Coach Bray to be offended by that. I know he's got a great offensive mind and defensive mind, so they they play well. They're good defense as well, and and block out and don't give up a lot of second, third shots, but. Um, when you, you know, when you look at their team, we, we um, you know, we just have a lot of respect for them. They've got some really good inside scores, and they can take it inside, and they've got all those three-point shooters. The point guards can uh, not only uh, are good at facilitating, but also can drive. So, uh, you, you, know, we talk, you know, when you when talk about stopping three-point shooters, um, you better not let them drive to the middle and let them kick it out. There's a lot of ways to score. Then we've got to stop all their sets. So, I, I don't, you know, it's just uh, difficult to say. and. Neither one of us have a whole lot of time to prepare, so I don't know exactly what he's going to do I, with uh, only another a day to get ready for our defense. And it's kind of the same on our end. I mean, we don't have a lot of time. To, they've got tons of sets, and they run them really, really well. So at the end of the day, it comes back. We just got to play well and do what we do best and stick to our identity, and I'm sure they'll do the, do the same. Any other questions for Coach Adams? Okay, thank you very right, much. Thank you all. God bless you. Appreciate Good luck it. Tomorrow. Thank you. Press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you.
Check one, two. Check one, two.
Reminder again, silence your cell phones. Announce your name and media affiliation when you're asking questions. One follow-up, raise your hand and we will find you uh, on the dais for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, Nate Lashesky, Cormac Ryan, Prentice Hub, Paul Atkinson Jr., and Dane Goodwin. Uh, we're gonna start with the questions right up here. And when you ask questions directed to a specific student athlete, please. Tom Noy, South Bend Tribune for Prentice. The Texas Tech, a couple of the Texas Tech guys talked about what a tough road, what a hard road they, they traveled going to junior college or D2. You didn't have to do that, but, but how difficult, how challenging was the road for you coming back from 3-15 three, three and 15 your freshman year? Uh, I mean, it, it, was a, it definitely was a tough road being at the, at the bottom of the barrel, uh, nobody really respecting us. But I think that a lot of us, including me, um, worked hard and throughout, the, throughout the years and in the off seasons just so we could get to right here. Other questions for the student athletes? Troy Hirsch, Fox 5, San Diego. I'd like to hear from maybe a couple of you. I'll start with you, Cormac, about uh, um, playing in this game. The, the fans really here seem to have embraced Notre Dame. I don't know if they live here, they follow here, they just love the underdog. I'm wondering what you think of, of that sort of thing here in San Diego, so far away from your home, getting the fan support here. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fans have been great. We had a good crowd last night. Um, that's always good, and you know it feels good to have people rooting for you. Um, I think our belief in each other is a little bit contagious, and I think people can feel that and sense that. Um, and you know, we've been together all year, so no matter if we're on the road uh, or at home or at a neutral site, or if there's fans or no fans, we stick together. Um, and so I think having fans is is uh, you know it's nice, but it's you know I think we are we'll be together no matter what. Who else wants that one? Anybody else want to respond to that one? No? Yeah. OK. And then, uh, uh, Paul, I'll ask you this question. Uh, the Texas Tech players were kind of thinking that they're the underdog, although they're, they're the three seed and you're the 11 seed. I'm wondering, do uh, you and your teammates think you're the underdog in this game? Um, I don't know uh, if we think we're the underdog. I think we're just two teams that can go out there and battle it out in March Madness. You know, I think seeds kind of go away when you're out on the court. You know, So it's just two teams trying to battle to survive in advance. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com for Nate. Um, you're a great three-point shooter. How important do you think the three will be versus Texas Tech? And is your father following you closely, or is he just focusing on the Badgers this month? <laughs> uh, uh, no, he's made it out to, uh, to the two games we've had so far, uh, which has been awesome. Um, but I'm sure, you know, he's also watching them uh, during this time. But, yeah, I think three-point shot will definitely be important. Um, I think definitely, you know, one of our big keys always is, you know, trying to, you know, drive and kick. Um, you know, really gets our offense going. So, you know, when you know some of my teammates are able to get in the lane, you know, I just try to find you know a window open for them um, to spot up for threes, and you know they find me there, which has been awesome. Lee Vaughn Whitaker, ABC 57 News in South Bend. Uh, Nate, like you just said, you like to drive and kick, and Coach Adams, he just said that's one of the things that he's focused on stopping here in this matchup. But you know, you got guys like Cormac that can go out there and drop 29 on seven threes. You know who's going to who can you guys can catch fire at any point. So how do you guys approach that tomorrow against a very strong defensive team? Who do you want to have that one? I mean, I think it's just anybody's game. Um, uh, we we all got the ability to 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 um, have a great game, and I think that when we're all playing the right way, um, it could go any any which way. Anybody could really have a a good day. So. And um, Prentice, happy birthday, man. Um, Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, coming in, coming into this matchup though, this is for anybody again. Um, it, you know, what's what's the goal here? You know, how far do you all really think that you can get? Obviously, you want to go as far as you can, but when you look at a team like this, you know, what's what's the what's the conversations like? Uh, I think we've talked about it as a group. I think we can really go as far as we want. Um, you know, we we come into this aggressive, uh, but humble, and we know that. You know, there's a bunch of games in front of us, but we're taking it one game at a time. And uh, we got the group that we got, and we're happy with what we got, and we're confident. And uh, if we go out there and play our game, I think uh, we can really take this as far as we want. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. This one's for Cormac. I guess 
What's the challenge of playing a game so quickly, and what's the challenge of, and it's almost a, a harken back to another question, but what's the challenge of playing this unique defense that Texas Tech plays where they try to force you to the side? Uh, I mean, I think, you know, playing the, when, when you got a, a group that's rolling like we are, playing games close together, I think it's actually a great thing. You just keep the mojo going, uh, keep the flow. And so I think we're ready to, to get out and, you know, we'd play today if we could, you know, we, we're, we're hungry. We want to get out on the court, lace them up and go get it. Um, Texas Tech is a strong defensive team and, you know, we're going to be prepared to, to play a competitive, tough game. I mean, that's kind of what you sign up for in March Madness, and that's what we're going to get. Tom Noy, South Bend Tribune for Dane. What can you do to get maybe in a better flow offensively, knowing tomorrow Texas Tech is probably going to try to run you off the line just, just to get into more of a groove than you've been offensively the last couple of games? Yeah, obviously, personally, I didn't have the game that you know I wanted, but you know my teammates were right there to pick me up, and Everyone else played a great game, so um, you know I just got to play my game, be aggressive, and and uh, you know play together, um, and you know have everyone else on the team help me out as well. Um, and I think we've done a good job of that. As Prentice said, it can be anyone's night, and uh, I think everyone really understands that. And it wasn't my night, but I'm okay with that. And uh, we got the win, and we're moving on. Uh, Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. Uh, Cormac answered this earlier, but Dane, um, talking about your struggles, how can fan support really help you get back going and, and the environment uh, uh, get you going shooting from the floor? Yeah, obviously, um, you know, I think the crowd, you know, getting involved and getting really into the game is going to help. Um, and I think uh, you know, a lot of people are rooting for us, you know, because we've been out it for a couple of years now and um, started to you know, get a little feel of it, and as Cormac said, you know people are starting to really rally around us. And I think that I think that's pretty cool. So, just being involved and, and really you know staying confident, um, haven't shot as well as I you know I'd like the past couple of games, but you got to keep that same mindset of you know um, everyone's here for a reason, and you got to do you got to do what you got to do and, and go play go play your game, and but stick to the script and, and play as a team as well. So. Um, just understanding that and understanding that we're going to win this t win this thing as a team and, and not just individually is um, you know probably the most important thing. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thanks. Oh, Bernie Wilson with Associated Press. Uh, Cormac, you said you'd play today if you guys could. Um, you will be playing a third game in five days. Um, and some people might expect you guys to run out of gas. What is your energy level and and whatnot going into tomorrow? I think we feel great. I mean, we've had stretches during the season um, where we've played three and five, you know, five and eight or whatever, um, three in a row. You know, we've had those stretches, and I think we're all – we're a group of veteran guys uh, who, know, who know how to kind of prepare our bodies, recover the right way, take care of ourselves. Um, so – we're going to be uh, we're going to be ready to roll on Sunday. Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Good luck tomorrow. Well, they're, they're going to go as soon as he's ready. So, yeah, it's just they have a window. If they want to go early, if the head coach wants to go early, go right to it. Yep. It's like team. You take it by teams. The next team is the, the schedule.
Pleasure to everyone to announce name and media affiliation when asking questions and raise your hand so we can find you. We'll begin with uh, Notre Dame head coach Mike Bray and an opening statement. We are uh, thrilled to be here. We'll go over and stretch out here a little bit. One of those fake practices here. Uh, and then uh, certainly we play a really physical, old, tough, good team tomorrow. They're really good. And uh, BPI doesn't give us much of a chance. So I'm really worried. You know, I, you know, if we if you would look back at the BPI on us this year, it was always Notre Dame, 30% chance of winning, 20% chance of winning. Somehow we – it's been unbelievable. Who does that damn thing? <laughs> Anyways, we got to be ready for a physical game. And, you know, we play against teams like this in our conference. But they're uh, so impressed with them defensively. Coach does an unbelievable job. And they're all men. They're all 22 and 23 years old. Um, so we got our hands full, but we're excited about the challenge. Tom Noy, South End Tribune. Mike, tomorrow's three games in five days. You've kind of done that dance with four and eight earlier. And that included the long flight to Florida. How, how, does, that, how does that help? Like, can, can, you, yeah. can you say, hey, we've done this? Yeah, I think, you know, I think I mentioned that last night. You know, we beat Virginia on a Saturday. Got our butts kicked by Duke on a Monday. 48 hours later, we jumped, We went to Miami and won. And then we went to NC State and won. So we've had, because of the reschedule stuff, we, we've had some jammed up games. And so this week feels kind of familiar to us and our guys. And, uh, and you know, you're just playing on fumes, man. You're just playing. And um, uh, so, and, and we've done a good job in between keeping them fresh and Stretching them out. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, you're tied with the illustrious Richard Frederick Phelps for the most tourney wins in school history. Um, do you two still talk, and are you worried that if you break his record, he's not going to get you anything for your birthday next week? You know, that you tell me that, if I get kidnapped tonight, <laughs> it would be digger to make sure if we got it done tomorrow, I wouldn't break his record. So um, we do. I, I went Fourth of July is coach's birthday I took him a bottle of champagne over and we sat on the back porch I haven't been able to see him as much with the pandemic because he's been very smart about you know staying away you know uh, but he was 80 this past year comes to all our games good friend uh, you know teases me I tease him back and uh, for 22 years I've, I've had to uh you know, manage a high maintenance. You know how you have to manage a high maintenance player? I uh, just manage a high maintenance ex coach, no problem. Hey, Mike, this is Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Um, you already touched on it a little bit, and you had a chance to, I know, watch them a little bit in person yesterday. But with Texas Tech's defense, what makes them unique? And I mean, how do you just describe it? The bodies and their stances. I have been so impressed. You know, you're talking about kids getting them in a stance. How does you do that at basketball camp? That's a station at basketball camp. Some guys grow up and come to college and they can be in a stance and they stay down. Everybody they play is in a great stance and it's a great body in a great stance with strength and height and length. And they almost push each other out of the way to take the charge. No, no, I want to take it. No, no, I'm going to take it. Um, it it's, uh, now, we're a really good passing team. And we're going to have to rely on moving that ball to move them around a little bit. Because if you try and do something after the third pass, you're going to run into a, a chest. Uh, Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. Uh, you mentioned playing on fumes. You mentioned how stout Texas Tech is. How much is the crowd maybe going to help you guys get over that hump, play with energy, and, and do as much as you can on Sunday? Well, you know, I was really thrilled with our turnout yesterday. You know, we've had a great contingent of ND people. Certainly we have a lot of alums out here on the West Coast, and, and uh, I would think it would be even better. And so we're, we're going to need that. I think that really helped us in the second half 
when we got a little run, our crowd was really in it, and, and it, you know, it, it gave us some momentum. Uh, Eamon Brenham, The Athletic. Have you guys had much experience playing against that m no middle defense? And what do you think is the best way for your guys to be able to be effective against it? Well, you know, Virginia is a little bit like that, how they jam it up. Um, Florida State, I made the comparison because of the physicality of the bodies on the court, and they switch a lot of stuff. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're got, you've got to swing that ball a couple times. You've got to move it. And you can't be excited to try and make a play after three passes. There's just not going to be any room. There's no question we're going to have to shoot over the top of that some. You know, it's jammed in. It's really jammed in on the help side. When we make double-digit threes, we're, we're pretty good. And I think we're going to get some looks the way they play their defense. We're going to have to make some, a, a good amount, to win. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Mike, you talked about on uh, Thursday maybe changing or managing your rotation of seven a little bit differently. Do you plan on doing the same thing tomorrow? Well, the, you know, the, the other day, you know, in the game yesterday, I had two, my two guards were in, both had two fouls. So we just kind of yo-yoed them a little bit to get to halftime. I was hoping neither one would have a third. Um, we play seven. And, and, you know, there's some kids on that blue team that practice against us that have a really bright future. But we have rode those seven guys. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to continue to do that. Those are the guys I, I feel good about. Trey Wirtz, uh, you know, Dane will start. Nate comes off the bench. Sometimes at halftime, we started Nate. Dane comes off the bench. It's kind of how we've, we've had to do it. You know, again, what benefits you during this tournament, the TV timeouts are a minute longer than during the regular season. And the halftime's 20 minutes, not 15. So there's amazing – there's really time to get your legs under you. And old guys can play a lot. Like, older players can play long minutes. Um, but um, our sevens are seven, and they've been really good to us, and they kind of know who they are when they get in the game, and that's, that's the mindset going in. Uh, Mason Hordeskin came back in, back in Lubbock, Texas. Coach, you kind of touched upon it a little bit right there, just the overall maturity and physicality that both you and Texas Tech has. Uh, what do you think about having players like that that are a little bit more mature college basketball players adds to a team's, I guess, physicality? Well, the one thing I said a couple of years ago, and I've told like a, some coaches when they get jobs, get old and stay old. You know, I violated that one this that one time with this current senior class when they were freshmen. We played them. We finished last in the ACC. Um, certainly, with the portal and immediate eligibility, you can really stay. I think as a whole, college basketball is really old right now. That's also why it's very physical. I, I made a comment. This is how good a year Blake Wesley's had. Blake Wesley just turned 19 uh, when we were in Dayton. He just turned 19. Blake Wesley, and in, in same against Rutgers, same against probably yesterday against uh, Alabama and definitely tomorrow, he's doing it against 22-year-olds every night. I said to my staff, when does he get to play against the 19-year-old? And they're like, well, no, the next team's got the grad transfer here, super, super transfer here. So, <laughs> he's really had a good year, and he's playing against 22, 23-year-old guys. So it, it's old. Now, we have our rotation of good old guys, too, and it's, and it's really helped us. But I've always, if you, can, if you can stay old, and everybody's staying old right now with this new rule. Everybody's really staying old. And, uh, you know, even, even Kentucky went old, right, and had a great regular season. And, and, and uh, you know, Duke's probably the only one that's kind of young with their phenoms. So um, I, I asked my staff the other day, hey, when do these, when do these six-year guys all go and we get back to the regular count? Can we get them out of here and get the regular count? Is that, and no one knows how much eligible. Like I asked sometimes, how much Cormac Ryan has two years? How many years does Wurtz have? You know, we're trying to figure out everybody's eligibility. But it's old and it's physical. Tom Noy, South Bend Tribune. Mike, how how much has the scar tissue of 3-15 and 15 helped these guys do what they've done here the last couple of days? Well, I think it's big time. There's no question. I mean, they, they got beat up. And you think about the timing in your league. When they were freshmen, 
and we played them, and we took our medicine. We had three one seeds in our league. As seniors, we didn't have three one seeds in the ACC. And I kidded the other day. I think I told you guys I thought I was in a one-bid league there for a while in February, the way they talked about the ACC. Neat to see the league playing well in this thing. Um, but, th yeah, that was, I think, a great motivating factor as they've grown and got older and gotten better. And they've stuck with us, and we've stuck with them. And, and uh, it's been – that's how we've run the program, and it's – I'm, that's why I'm really happy for the older guys, how they've invested and get to experience this and be hanging around in this for a while. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Mike, you talked about earlier with this defense, it reminds you of Florida State. Would you, what are the similarities to it, and would you describe it as a junkyard defense, kind of borrowing Leonard's nickname for it? Yeah, well, I'll say this. The bodies are similar, but they're really disciplined. Florida State will come out and trap you and run through a passing lane. Texas Tech is really disciplined. This is where we go when the ball is there. He is a fabulous defensive coach. And I watch them all this season and really impressed with what they do. And, and, and again, they do what they do. They rep it, obviously, every day. And then they've got physical guys in every spot so um you know if, if we could get some transition buckets we got a couple yesterday if we could not play against the set defense some that would really help dane o'neill at the athletic mike how how difficult is it to do that i mean to get guys to commit to playing and being so disciplined on defense because you know you always hear that guys don't necessarily prefer that end of the floor it's not where the glory lies yeah i, I mean i think it's in this day and time, Dana, I think it's hard, you know, the kids all have their workout guys and they're, you know, they're not doing closeouts and slides. They're working on their game. And, you know, when a kid comes to you, they want to know about their offensive development. Am I going to be a point guard? Am I going to play? How are you going to work? How are you going to play me? Nobody wants to be a center, you know, so you got to fake them out in recruiting. Oh, yeah, we'll just call you a four. Then we'll post your ass when the game starts. You know, uh, so, you know, that's really what you're working with. Um, but to get a group to buy in and really sell it, it, it has to come from the top. We, we have gone in and out of being good enough defensively. Um, I think what's helped us is, you know, Anthony Solomon coming back with us and just taking that and being the bad cop during our defensive segments has really helped us grow since June. Um, but it, it is a sales job uh, every day to get them in a stance, garden, rotating. Uh, it's not natural, and uh, certainly Texas Tech has a formula of doing it. Uh, Coach Troy Hirsch from Fox 5 San Diego here. Uh, you started off by talking about uh, the chance that you had to win via the BPI. Yeah. Um, is, that, uh, is that fuel for you and your team? Oh, yeah, I think it's been great. I mean, I, I, I tried not to watch the TV during the day in February because I'd look up and go, what? We only have a 25% chance of winning? And uh, we kid about it. We kid about it back there. And my younger assistants who are into all the analytics, they're freaking out. You know, well, I'm going to come up with a new one, Coach. I'm going to come up with a new one. So, yeah, I think it's really helped us. You know, we have – look, we never were ranked – during the year, we kind of been, hey, they're, they're good, but how good's the league? Is, I mean, they finished second, but how good's the league? You know, Duke Carolina, you know, we, they, they've lived that, we've lived that. I think it's been great fuel for us, no question about it. And, you know, it's, we're, we're in a very similar scenario as I read the ticker again. Any other questions for Coach Bray? Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. You got.
silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. Raise your hand so our people can find you and also make sure you uh, let us know which student athlete your question or questions are for. Representing the Arizona Wildcats student athletes, Dalen Terry, Azulis Tubelis, and Umar Balo. We will start the questions for the student athletes. Are we missing somebody? Only two, only two. Okay, my mistake, sorry. Good. Go ahead, start over here. Bring, bring in the microphone. No, right here. Oh. Did you have a question? No, I mean, it'd be great. Oh, yeah, okay. sorry. Justin Spears from the Arizona Daily Star. Um, for, for both of you guys, actually, um, Earlier today, uh, Sean Miller was announced that he was taking the Xavier job. Just your thoughts on for your former coach getting a new opportunity? Man, um, that's great for him. Like, we all proud of him. Um, he was proud of us for everything we did this year. I've spoke to him numerous times, and I mean, that's just real good for him. Man, I just, I mean, he had a year off, so you know, now he's back to coaching again. He's gonna be smiling. I'm happy to see him happy again. Coach Miller, uh, he taught us a lot of things, and uh, they were just lucky to have him. Lena Washington, sorry. Lena Washington, 12 News in Phoenix. If both of you could answer this, I'd appreciate it. I'm just curious what you guys are most proud of when you look at what you've accomplished individually or as a team. What are you most proud of when you look at this season? Uh, I'm just proud of my team, how we uh, were playing together. We shared the ball. Uh, we're not. Uh, selfish players and uh, that's why we have a lot of uh, success success this year and i know like we're not done yet we need to win uh, tomorrow's game and and yeah yeah but i'm proud of my team i love my team i love uh, being a wildcat yeah. Dalen, you um just piggybacking off what he said yeah i love my team um, we all just excited for each other, you know. So I just think that's like one of the biggest reasons why we do what we do on the court. Like it just comes with so much success that we all just love each other and we just have a good we have good relationships on and off the court. Uh, Nick King from Three TV, CBS Five in Phoenix. Dalen, I know you were an Arizona fan from the time you were a little kid. Did you have any moments yesterday? Just your first March Madness experience and being in a Wildcats jersey and playing on that stage. Um, definitely, um, before the tip or before the, they announced the starting lineup, like I just I felt like a like a little bit of chills, and I was just like, dang, like this is what I've been waiting for all my life. And I've been watching March Madness since I was in grade school, like since I can remember. So it was just it was just a good feeling to be out there and being part of it, knowing that there's a little kid that was in my spot before watching me now. Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS, um, Dalen. Uh, what was the atmosphere like yesterday in, in, in terms of the, the fan support? Um, and how did you guys react to that? And then what are you expecting tomorrow from the environment? I mean, it was great. Um, I felt like we had a lot of fans there yesterday. It was kind of weird at the beginning of the game when it wasn't nobody there. You know, like it kind of – it was just was odd. Like it was nobody there. It wasn't like there was a, other team's fans. It was just like nobody was there. And then I look up like five seconds later and everybody's there. So, I mean, it was great. And then – it's great to be not in Tucson or wherever we're at, and I can go to the crowd and lift my hands up and everybody gets loud. So I just thank our fans for traveling with us. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com for either of you. Um, you played several tournament teams in the regular season who have great point guards like Hunter Maldonado at Wyoming, Kennedy Chandler at Tennessee, and Tiger at UCLA, and you did a good job of limiting all of them. Is there any special way that you're planning to deal with Mike Miles and TCU? Yeah, so it, uh, we'll do the same thing. Uh, we just had a practice. We uh, we went through their plays and stuff, and uh, it's our coaches who does the job, and uh, we just need to uh, deliver. That's it. Brian Peterson with AZ Desert Swarm. For either of you guys, um, how concerned are you about the turnovers that happened in, in yesterday's game, or is that just a one-time thing, you think? Man, that's behind us, you know. Um, turnovers that happen I mean they happen so 
We was just playing a little, a little out of control sometimes, but obviously we got the dub. It's definitely something we need to worry about for a little bit, but not. We're not gonna lose no sleep over it. Obviously, we got to clean that up if we want to keep winning these games. So, it just is what it is. We gotta get better. Uh, question, David Kelly, KVOA News 4 Tucson. For both of you, but first, Azulis. Azulis, so many of you international guys did not grow up in this March Madness frenzy. So do you think you guys have a different calmness about it because you didn't have that hysteria of watching this whole tournament since you were seven years old? And then for Dalen, do you sense that the international guys approach it differently because they're, they didn't have that experience? Yeah, you know, in uh, Lithuania, we don't have that uh, that tournament. But uh, when I was young, I saw I saw a couple a uh, couple of posts when uh, Sabonis played in Gonzaga, and they lost, I think, in uh, match madness somewhere. And that's how I knew about it. But I didn't I didn't uh, follow it. I I didn't know. Uh, what this is about, but uh, now I just, I just know that uh, you lose or you go home. So I'm going to win uh, every game here. I mean, for the um, international players, like from from my point of view, I mean, for all of us as a team, I mean, obviously it's just a basketball game. Like when I was a little kid, obviously, like from the outside looking in, it looks crazy. And before the game, I had like my moment or whatever. But once that ball go up in the air, it's just a basketball game. So. I mean, we got to do what we got to do every night and just get one dub at a time, just see how far we go, you know? Dale and Drew Davidson, Fort, uh, Drew Davidson, Fort Worth Star Telegram. You, you tried out for Team USA Basketball, obviously, in Fort Worth this summer. What was that experience like? And did not making the team kind of drive you this off season? And uh, just a f quick follow on Mike Miles and going up against him during that uh, training camp. I mean, obviously, I was a little... I was a little hot about it, you know, but it was a good experience. USA Unite team, just to be on that list was even, was just, I mean, it was a, I was thankful for even being on there. Mike Miles, yeah, he's a good player. I played against him all my life since high school, before that. And Coach Dixon, I mean, obviously he was the USA coach too. So, I mean, I'm familiar with them too. Um, I'm not I'm not going to look at this any type of different, you know. Um, I see him this summer and I didn't make the team. It is what it is. It fueled me for this summer and just, Coming back and seeing seeing Azulis play against USA and seeing Ben playing against USA, I mean, obviously I was rooting for them that time, you know? But, I mean, it is what it is. I give them both their props. They're doing real good. They're both a tournament team. So, I mean, salute. Scott Miller, New York Times. Uh, Azulis, uh, what is it about Coach Lloyd? He has so much experience coaching international players at Gonzaga, and now he, he's working, what do you see from your perspective on what makes him click so well with international players? And I have one follow-up, if I may. Uh, I think he's a special coach. And like you said, he, he has an experience with uh, international players. So I know it was easy for me because uh, he is uh, easy, easy to understand and he understands me. So we just, on same page every time and yeah and question for Dalen with so many international players on your team I was looking through the media guys so many languages are spoken what is it from your perspective what's it like uh, being surrounded having so many players from so many different countries and all coming together I mean it's a blessing for me to even be on the type this type of team right now just this young Seeing everybody talk in different languages sometimes is just, it's funny to me, you know, because I only know English. So, Umar, Ben, they be talking in French, and I just be like, I don't know what they say. I know I know a few words, obviously, the bad ones, but, I mean, it's funny. So, I mean, even, like, Zoo doesn't really speak that much. I mean, what is your language? Lithuanian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. So, Lithuania. him and his brother speak that sometimes, but I didn't even know what the language was, so, I mean... It's just funny to me when they talk in that language because I can't talk in a different language for them not to understand me. So it's just funny. It's a blessing to be a part of a team like this. Polly, just to your right. 
Jason Shear, Wildcat Authority. Uh, for both of you guys, I was just wondering, what's the most physical team you faced this year, and what was the, the biggest challenge when you faced a team that is going to try to push you guys around? Uh, I don't see a big difference between them because I think uh, we, we did a, a really good job uh, receiving uh, physicality from there. So I don't see I don't see who was the most uh, physical team. Uh, I mean, kind of what saying what he said. I don't see a team that like stood out that more than anybody else. But there was a few teams that like obviously they were physical, but it was more on us. Like we just didn't bring our physicality that day, you know. And obviously they bring it for a little bit. And we bring it eventually. But I feel like with these physical teams, we just gotta just do what we do. Stick to our fundamentals. Uh, Saul Bookman, PHNX Sports. Uh, yesterday, Dalen, uh, it seemed like there were, the crowd was was hoping that they would, you know, drop a bucket to kind of change the momentum because everybody loves an underdog, obviously, in March Madness. Could you guys sense that on the court, and did that propel you to your run yesterday? Um, and do you expect the same thing to happen tomorrow in terms of the crowd um, pulling for the underdog? I mean, obviously, I, I I didn't really think that there was a big difference in the crowd. I thought it was a lot of Arizona fans there. I mean, I seen a, a little bit of green in, in the uh, crowd, but I was on the court. Like, I really wasn't paying attention to stuff like that. Um, only thing I really noticed is when there's red red uh, shirts in the in the stands. So it just is what it is. I mean, if they want to root for the other team, it is what it is. Middle of the front row, second row. Alec White, Arizona Daily Star. Dalen, this is for you. Jerseys, uh, where with your guys' names on the back, are now sold in the UA bookstore. What's it like to see a jersey with your name on it being sold? I mean, it's a dream come true for, like, like I've just been thinking about this ever since I was younger, you know. Um, just having somebody else wear my jersey and, like, say they bought my jersey, it's kind of like, like a milestone, you know. And also, I mean, international guys are getting there, getting NIL deals too, so. Now Zulus can make money off it, off that. So, I mean, that's great. Troy Hirsch with Fox Out San Diego. This question is for Dalen. Uh, uh, alluded to earlier about Tommy Lloyd and, and the uh, ability he's had to communicate with international players. But just from a, a basketball perspective and a, a philosophy and an impact perspective he's had on this year, could you just comment on what he's done this year? I mean, Tommy, Tommy knows basketball, and obviously, like, his work shows he's been in basketball a long time, so we just listen to everything he says. Um, obviously, he's not going to steer us in the wrong direction, you know, so, I mean, he's a, he's a great coach. Like, I thank him for everything every day, you know. Uh, I was wondering, uh, this is Bruce Pascoe from the Arizona Daily Star. Dalen, I was just wondering, uh, with the defense they ha have, uh, trying so focus so much on keeping guys out in the middle, what, what kind of challenges does that bring to you as you know, a guy who's handling the ball a lot, trying to get in inside? And, and, and does it remind you of any team you've faced this year? Um, I mean, we've played against teams that try to keep us out of the middle. But obviously, we're just going to stick to our game plan and just do what we do. Any other questions? Okay, follow up here. Can I just follow that up? Just, Dalen, just, uh, you know, Tommy's been talking a lot about, you know, he wanted you guys to attack coming to this tournament, you know, playing like you're not defending anything. Do you, do you feel a lot of that, you know, as, as a guy who kind of brings that energy and is known for doing that? And, and you know, what, what's that been like this year, uh, this weekend, excuse me? I mean, definitely, uh, we definitely have to be in attack mode. And it, it doesn't really matter what team we're in. Tommy was making that, making that a point across across the board that we just got to be in tag mode. This is a tournament game. Like, this is March. Like, anybody, anybody, like, it's just March. Like, any, anything happens. So, I mean, we got to be in tag mode, and we just got to come out throwing punches. Yeah, Steve Rivera, All Sports Tucson. Dalen, how much fun are you having playing the point? It looks like you're enjoying it, and, and uh, Kerr's probably waiting to, to take, it, take over again. But how much fun are you having? Um, I mean, I mean, it's fun. I mean, I played point in high school. But I'm not, look, I'm not really having that much fun. I mean, it's just basketball. I mean, I have fun off the ball, too. So, I mean, I just look at it as an opportunity that presented itself. And obviously, I want Kurt to come back. Like, I want him to get healthy again. So, because I know when he's healthy and doing what he does, we're at our best. So, I'm just hoping he comes back. Any other questions for the student athletes?
Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Continuing on with the Arizona Wildcats with an opening statement from head coach Tommy Lloyd. Uh, well, good to see you guys. I mean, I always tell you guys it's uh, it's great to be playing meaningful games, and uh, obviously this is a, a meaningful game, and we're really excited for the opportunity. And TCU played great last night, and so it, it's going to be a battle. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be ready for it. All right, we'll take questions now and make sure you raise your hand so we can find you. Yeah, Steve Rivera, all sports Tucson. Tommy, you've seen every style this year from different teams, physical and otherwise. What do you expect from these guys? They look pretty impressive defensively. Well, yeah, they're great defensively, and you know, they're. It seems like that whole Big Twelve is, you know, in in, in, in Tennessee have tilted towards that uh, that no middle, you know, try to keep you on the side defense, and and they're good at it. And uh, and then, you know, on top of that, they're extremely physical, and they're a great rebounding team, and that's always been a, a trademark of Jamie's teams. Justin Spears from the Arizona Daily Star. Uh, you know, TC, like you said, they're a great rebounding team, great defensively in the front court. What kind of challenge do you think this will present for guys like Christian and Zulus? Well, I mean, it's obviously it's a great challenge, but, um, you know, I, I mean, I think we're pretty good at those two things too. And so, you know, we're, we're going to come out and we're going to battle. And, you know, and, 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 you know, I just told our guys, 
you know, you, you got to be ready for the physical battle and you, you got to embrace it. And, 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 and it, it's, if you do it, you have a really good chance to be successful. If you don't, it's going to be a tough night. Tommy David Kelly, News 4 Tucson. Two-part question. First question being, I asked a couple of your players what their favorite NCAA moment was. Two of them said the Jalen Suck shot from last year. Just curious if they've asked you about that and what you told them about that moment from your perspective. And I'll follow up with those. None, none of them asked me about it. <laughs> no, they haven't. And, uh, you know, but, I, but I, did, I do always tell them this. I mean, if you end up with a... Uh, you know, a buzzer beater or a half quarter, shoot it to make it. And, 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 and that's what you do. Don't leave it short. And just, you know, all, all of us that grew up here in the United States have been a part of this March Madness hysteria since we were young. But a lot of your international players have not. Do you think they're bringing a different calmness to this event because they didn't grow up in that? Well, I mean, you know, I, I always tell our guys, we got to, you know, when, when things get chaotic and, you know, and, and they did this year. In, in a good way. When, when you start having a successful season and you have a great fan base, you know, you're going to get a lot of attention. And, uh, and things start getting a little chaotic. And, and we just try to do a really good job having tunnel vision and staying locked in at the task at hand. So I think, I think our international guys are, are handling that, handling this the same way they've handled everything all year. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Tommy, you guys have, with your size advantage, you've been able to wear teams down most of the season, especially when you've had your three bigs in there. But with Texas, with, with TCU, is there a team similar to what you faced this year that can match you with that size and physicality? Hmm. You know, I'd have, to, I'd have to dig deep. I mean, obviously, Tennessee was extremely physical. And, you know, UCLA, you know, they might not have the height, but they're extremely physical. And, uh, you know, and hey, hey, we're a physical team, too. You know, and I don't, I don't want people to mistake and, uh, you know, scoring a lot of points for not being physical. So we take, we take great pride in being able to battle physically. And, and obviously, tomorrow presents a great test. Back of the room. Uh, Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. Uh, after the game yesterday, you voiced a little bit of a frustration with the, the fans not given enough time to get back in the arena for session two. Um, what kind of environment are you expecting tomorrow, and how important is fan support to make a tournament run? Well, well the, the environment better be great. And, you know, you, 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 you try to have a great regular season, a conference season, to so, set yourself up to get a good seed. Because if you get a good seed, you're close to home. And, and, and this is supposed to be a great, advantageous you know, fan base for us. And yesterday we didn't feel it. And listen, I know we got a great fan base, and I know some of them are going to take it personal, but they got to be better tomorrow. They got to bring it tomorrow. I mean, as fans. And I know maybe you don't get your blue collar fan to as many of these games because they can't afford the tickets, you know, which is that's one of the things I was disappointed with the NCAA. You have people paying a lot of money for these tickets. And for them to come in 10, 20 minutes late for a game is crazy. You know, I mean, I think they got to consider the average fan who's paying a lot of money to come to these games, you know. Um, but our fans got to be better. And you know what? And, and, and the fans that are lucky enough to have tickets to this and, and financially be able to afford it, they need to get out of the seats tomorrow and they need to bring it. And, and they need to help us advance. I mean, th that's my message to them. Don't sit back and wait. Help us. Uh, uh, Nick King from 3TV, CBS 5 in Phoenix. Um, Tommy, I know Dalen does a lot more than scoring, but for him to have – the last two games now, I believe, his career high in scoring. What have you seen from him, and do you think there's any part of that that is him enjoying a big stage? Uh, I mean, he, he's, 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 he's really come a long way as a player this year, and he's really developed. And, you know, I mean, with, you know, with Kerr not having played, you know, maybe you know, we need a little bit more of a scoring punch out of him, and he's been opportunistic. You know? And, and Dalen's a, a good developing shooter, and if teams are going to play off him, I'm comfortable with him taking those wide-open threes. And... Uh, and, you know, and he steps up and makes them at critical times. I mean, they've, they've really been a catalyst for us these last couple games. Dane O'Neill at The Athletic. Tommy, talking with Christian, he said that this summer you, spoke, you spent time with him kind of, you know, niggling on some little things with, within his game to make them better. What did you concentrate on and, and kind of what's been the upside of all that work? Well, the first thing is, this, is, is, is love him and, and let him understand how good he can be, but there's going to be a process to it. And, and then we just start at square one. And honestly, with him, we started at, you know, catching the ball, securing it, and hitting it off the corner of the square. I mean, hundreds and or thousands of times, you know, to, to get his fit and working on his touch on his hook shots. And then, you know, it's, it's been ongoing development and maintenance since then. But, but Christian gets a lot of credit because, you know, bigs take longer to develop. I mean, that's, everyone knows that.
And and sometimes, you know, they just don't have the patience or the wherewithal to get themselves there. And he he's he he built up a, enough of a foundation his first couple of years to where if he really poured time into it, he was ready for a jump. And 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 we try to take advantage of that. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Um, I was just wondering how well you know Jamie. I think both of you have been in like a dozen NCAA tournaments each in the past 20 years, but I don't think you've ever faced each other. Um, no, no, I've known Jamie, you know, well enough throughout the years. I mean, he's friends with, you know, all my senior coaches in the coaching tree, you know, uh, and um, and so yeah, I've gotten to know him over the years, and he's a, he's a great guy, and you know, he he always goes out of his way and, and talks to me, and has been nothing but but good to me and cordial. Uh, Tommy Troy Hirsch with Fox 5 San Diego. Uh, Baylor knocked off earlier today and a one seed. I don't, do you bring that up to your team at all? Like, hey, just because we have a number one bias doesn't mean we can't get beat? No. I mean, our guys know that. I mean, they, they, they understand. I, I, I told them, you know, hey, the first game's tough, and then the second game's tougher. I mean, that, that's how these tournaments are. So, you know, we, we, we I mean, TCU has our full attention, and we understand if we don't do the things we, we need to do, you know, we might not be successful. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Tommy, just just any update on Kirk Creasa? Because notice he was out for pregame warm-ups yesterday. Just yeah, I mean, he's doing? making progress. You know, he's continuing to make progress day by day, and we're going to get there tomorrow and, uh, and 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 see how he looks. You know, I mean, but uh, but uh, but day to day, it's getting better. And like I told you guys, he's closer to playing than not playing. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. Yeah, Steve Rivera, All Sports Tucson. Uh, Tommy, is there a point where you have to rein in Dalen? It looks like he's having a lot of fun on the court, obviously. Off the court, it's very personable. But do you have to kind of say, okay, you know, relax a little? I mean, no. I mean, I just tell Dalen, take a breath. Get your feet on the ground. And, and when he does that, he's great. Sometimes he gets a little sped up, and I, I, can, I can see when it's happening. And then you know, I just talk to him, and he, you know, he, he takes a breath. And Justin's a little bit the same way. And, you know, and, and those guys, I'll give him credit when, when I – Give them those little reminders, they respond, and then they play really well. Uh, Bruce Pasco, the Daily Star in Tucson. Uh, uh, Tommy, just wondering, the, you mentioned Tennessee. I, I was wondering around the Pac-12, have you anything, seen anything close to this, the, the no middle? And if, if it was Tennessee or something similar, <coughs> uh, that was a game where you guys got in a hole early. And w what do you have to do to adjust uh, um, in that situation? Yeah, I mean, no, no one's playing as committed to the no middle stuff you know, in the Pac-12 uh, as these guys are. Um, you know, we, but the first thing you just gotta you gotta have you gotta be strong with the ball, you know, and, and, and you gotta play with a thrust, and you gotta play with our normal pace and, and and movement that we do, and then and then you gotta trust your fundamentals, you know, you, you gotta lock in, you gotta play with your feet on the ground, you gotta mix in some back cuts, a pass fake, you know, just like hey, I always tell tell our guys, play good basketball. I mean, that's what we gotta do. D does in a way does that maybe a good thing? You're talking about you know wanting this team to attack. Now they're going into a game where they're going to have to really uh, you know get get physical. I mean it, it, yeah, I mean it's 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 a it's a great thing. I mean that that's what you're going to have to do to keep advancing in this tournament. And so and that's what we've been building for all year. So I'm excited to see how it looks tomorrow. Coach, we have one call off the Zoom. Uh, Lindsay, if you can announce your name and affiliation. Hey Tommy, it's Lindsay Schnell from USA Today. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but Tara Vanderveer yesterday at Stanford issued a call. She challenged every NCAA tournament coach, men's and women's, to match her in donating $10 for every three-pointer made <coughs> in their tournament, so in the entire men's tournament or in the entire women's tournament, and putting that money toward humanitarian aid in Ukraine. I wondered if you knew that and if you would take her challenge. So far, she owes about three thousand dollars because there's been about uh three hundred threes hit so far in the women's tournament yeah i mean I, I would definitely look into it if, if i had the information i didn't know that but uh, i mean obviously there's a lot going on in our world right now and you know I, i'm pretty myopic at the moment unfortunately but uh yeah for sure Lindsay, how's your dad doing for one and two um <laughs> you know it, it's give me the information and, I, and for sure i'll definitely look into it Okay, he's gonna be thrilled you asked, and okay. I will. Uh, I'll get the information to you. Mick Cronin said yesterday, "Just tell Tara to send me a bill." Oh, nice. <laughs> Any follow-up? Thank up? you. Okay. Any other questions for the coach? Uh, Brent Scrombor, USA Today. There are a number of teams in this tournament that are still under the cloud of an un unresolved NCAA investigation, including yours. I wondered if uh, that has affected you in any way, or if it's bothered you that it's taken this long. 
um, you know, when I, when I took this job, I knew what I was stepping into. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the administration's been 100% transparent and, uh, you know, n no one in the program had anything to do w w with what had transpired before. Um, for me, I would just say this. I, I, wanted, I wanted to do a good job for these guys this year, give them a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. You know, because I was pretty certain that this year we'd be fine. And, and, and I, I, I feel good moving forward that Arizona's been very proactive in, in making sure that we're going to be tournament eligible, you know, long term. So um, that was my main focus, is making sure this year these guys are a great group of young men and, and they get the opportunity to experience this tournament. Uh, Greg Hansen, Arizona Daily Star. Tommy, what's your reaction to Sean's reported move back to Xavier? For one, I didn't know that. Two, I'm, you know, I'm not on Twitter much. Um, and, and three, I'm happy for him. I mean, that's a great job, and he's a great coach, and obviously it's a place that he's comfortable with and has a great history. So, you know, I, I wish him nothing but the best, and, you know, I, I look forward to catching up with him when the dust settles for both of us. Any other questions? Thank you, Coach. All right, guys, have a good one.
silence your cell phones, announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions, limit to one follow-up, make sure you raise your hand, and when you ask a question of the student athletes from TCU, make sure you uh, recognize which student athlete the question is for. Representing TCU, Eddie Lampkin, Jr., Micah Peavy, Francisco Farabello, Xavier Cork, and Mike Miles, Jr. Just raise your hands and we'll start off over there, Polly, to your right. Drew Davidson, Forest Star Tugger. This is for all you guys. Just does Arizona's offense remind you of anyone? Obviously, KU statistically oh, was Big 12's top offense, but when you watch Arizona, um, anything stand out and, and how big of a challenge is it to slow them down? Want me to go first? You want me to go first? Yeah. Well, for me, it's just I seen they play high low and battle with Kansas, McCormick, Lightfoot. Uh, they play around the rim a lot, and it'd be a good matchup for me, and I'm prepared for it. Um, piggybacking off what Eddie said, uh, they remind me a lot of how Kansas gets in transition and scores a lot off of that. So we're just going to have to try really hard to stop them. Anyone else want? I um, mean, yeah. Uh, Kansas, like, of course, like they have two bigs that are really good. Uh, ceiling, uh, they're really good in the paint uh, and around the rim. So ball pressure is going to be a big key for us. Uh, don't let the ball get in the paint so easy. And uh, as they said, like transition. In the back, Polly. Uh, this is for uh, Mike and Micah. Uh, Mike, Just give, uh, give uh, name and affiliation. I'm sorry, yeah, uh, Troy Hirsch with Fox 5 San Diego here. Uh, Mike, um, TCU has never advanced to the second round. I'm wondering what this would mean for the program to get past this round. Uh, it would mean a lot. You know, we made history yesterday. Yesterday, winning a game in uh, 35 years. Uh, we're looking to make more history tomorrow. You know, it's not going to be easy. Arizona is a great team, but uh, we're preparing the right way. And if we come out and play defense like we did last game, we're going to have a good shot. Uh, what was? Can you say the question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, the uh, uh, TCU has never advanced to Sweet 16, and I'm just wondering what a victory tomorrow would mean for the program to m essentially make history. Uh, it'll mean a lot. Like you said, it'll. It would be the first time that we made it to, uh, won a second game in this tournament. So we just got to lock in on the de defensive end, and the offense will come to us. And yeah, we're trying to make history. Uh, Colin Post, TCU 360. Really, for any of y'all, I know you guys played a lot of games to end the season, but just how nice is it to have this off day where there's no travel, you're not playing a game, to get prepared for a big game tomorrow night? Uh. I feel like this is something we really needed, uh, especially lately. Uh, we have a lot of games on the road, going back to back, like Kansas, West Virginia, all those games back to back. And we have to go on the road a lot, be traveling, or just be uh, preparing for a game. So to have this off day right now is really helpful right now. Uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com. For any of you, I don't know if it's a record, but I believe this is the sixth time in the past 10 weeks you're facing a one seed because you've played Baylor twice and Kansas three times. Any lessons learned about what it takes when you're facing the best of the best? Mike, you can start with it. Okay. Uh, we just know we have to be at our best. You know, another one seed we're playing, and we beat Kansas. Uh, you know, and we beat Tech. They won a one seed, but they're still a really good team. So uh, we have what it takes to beat the top teams. And, uh, you know, we just got to come out and play the same way we did those games and like we did yesterday, you know, on defense, rebounding, you know, trying to stop their best players and uh, stop them in transition. Uh, Brian Esprich, TCU Sports Network. Mike, I'm going to stay with you. You know a couple of these guys from the uh, U19 event uh, this summer. Do you know their game? Does it help at all? Do you do you understand where they're coming from after seeing them play? Uh, I remember Benedict a little more than I remember the uh, the guy from Mali, uh, Maui, wherever it was. I can't really say the name. But um, I remember Benedict, you know, he was good. He was on the Canada team. It was a close game. It was a good game. So uh, I definitely know what he's capable of. Uh, obviously, he's – projected to go a lottery pick, so we all know what he's capable of. He's a good player, so uh, we're going to have to crack down on him and uh, try to uh, stop him. Did, did Jeff Wilson with uh, Frogs today, did, you, did any of you guys watch the Baylor-Carolina game? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. So, so you saw a one-seed fall. Yeah. What, what, did that go through your mind, like, we can do that too? And, and if so, what do you got to do? And who's that for? Uh, Micah. 
Um, yes, I did watch that game, and I was just I had, Mike's my roommate, so I was just telling him like we can do this. Uh, like we've said before, we just have to lock in on the defensive end. Honestly, um, yeah, that's really what our focus is: defense. Because you know, our, our score is gonna, uh, our the ball is gonna go in on the offensive end, so we just gotta lock in on defense because they're a really good team. So, Mike, uh, st sticking with you, what, name what, and affiliation. Sorry, please. Drew Davidson for Star Telegram. What have you seen from Benedict? And obviously, I'm sure you're gonna uh, be guarding him a lot. Uh, just kind of what would what, what's the key for you to slow him down? Um, uh, he likes to come off a lot of uh, screens for his uh, shots, and he likes to get out of transition because he's a really athletic player. So it's going to be tough. You just have to, I say, play like we played uh, Oche from Kansas. Um, they're lots, uh, they're like the similar players. So just guard him how we guarded him. Uh, Colin Post, TCU 360. For Mike, uh, you only took two threes last night. That's only the second time all year you've taken that few. Is that just about what the defense gives you, or are you kind of making a concerted effort to get yourself bigger buckets at the rim? Uh, I feel like everyone knows I like to drive to the rim more than I like to shoot threes. And uh, I knew I could get past their center. You know, he wasn't – I was obviously quicker than him, so I could get around him and get to the rim. And that's when I'm best when I get downhill and attack the rim. So, uh, you know, I could have taken more threes, you know, because they were open, but I really wanted to get to the rim and finish. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Eddie, uh, Coach Dixon said last night that you guys really hit your defensive potential. I guess, you know, what was the reason for you guys getting to that defensive potential, and how do you repeat that? Uh, for me, it just – I bring the energy on the team, and then uh, they – we all were just locked in from shoot-around, from travel, from when they called our name on Sunday. Everybody in the team was just locked in, and then Coach Dixon been preaching us to load up, and that's what we did yesterday. We was loading up. And coming into the next game, they playing two bigs. I think that's going to be the first game that we playing a team that plays two bigs. We're just going to have to load up and do the same thing we did last night. Uh, Bruce Pascoe, Arizona Daily Star. Mike, I think you played against Dale and Terry in that U19 camp uh, here at USA. And I was just curious if you remember him. What, what do you think of him? And he, because he, as it's turned out, he's played a little bit of point guard for them as well right now. Uh, yeah, he was at the training camp. Uh, I know da I've known Dalen a long time. You know, we went to uh, camps in high school together, so I've known him for a long time. He's a good player. He's athletic. He's long. Uh, he can run in transition. You know, he's good in transition. Their whole team is good in transition. So uh, I definitely know he's a good player. You know. Uh, I know what to expect from him, and I'm probably going to – I don't know if I'll be starting the game out of him, but if I am, I'll try my best. But, you know, I've known him for a long time, so I know he's good. Brian Esbridge, TCU Sports Network. Uh, Fran, this one's for you. There's a lot of international players in this tournament who have had success. Arizona's got a lot of international players on their roster. Do you find yourself watching them and, and watching their success? Do you, do you look at that? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I know what international people brings to to college basketball, uh, and and I think it's great. They they of course have two great players, and yeah, I, I admire them the way uh, they bring international people in here. So the the most we are, the more more people are gonna come from the outside. Uh, Colin Post, TCU 360. Xavier, this is for you. Uh, yesterday, Eman was saying from top to bottom, every guy on y'all's roster really contributed last night. As someone who comes off the bench but really has a big role, especially inside the paint. Just how valuable do you do you see yourself on this team and how connected do you think you guys are where everyone on any given night can contribute? Uh, I also feel like that's one of the strengths that we have. We have uh, so many players that can come in and make uh, immediate impact uh, on any night, uh, me included. I feel like my athleticism really adds to our roster, the ability to like change it up and switch at the one through five. Uh, really adds to our defense. I feel like it makes us uh, a lot better, it makes us harder to score on. So I think that really adds to us. Uh, Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. This one's for Eddie. Um, what kind of environment are you expecting tomorrow night, and how can you harness that energy um, into uh, positive success on the floor? Uh, I expect the packed house, just like when we played at Kansas, I don't even think nobody can match what we played at Kansas or even at Texas. Uh, I feel like we're going to tune them out. Our fans are going to be there, too, and we we ready to go. Any other questions for the student athletes? OK, thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you.
slash photography is prohibited. Make sure you announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. We'll get started in a minute. Jamie Dixon, head coach, TCU, and we'll begin with an opening statement. I uh, obviously uh, been working on uh, Arizona. Um, got back uh, last night late, uh, jumped right on it. Obviously, um, we had it spread out as to who, what, ha had what opponent. And um, so uh, excited about the opportunity. Obviously, know how good they are. Um, uh, a really skilled basketball team, well coached. Uh, Mike and I are very familiar with their players. I think we played uh, against uh, um, half of them in the uh, FIBA uh, under 19s uh, World Championships. I think uh, I think uh, Coach Lloyd uh, got the all uh, all tournament team. I guess brought him back here with him. But uh, um, really a talented team and well coached and uh, familiar with a lot of their guys. And then uh, the Kerr kid we played against when he was at George Mason a couple of schools ago, a couple of years ago. So. Um, uh, he's a really good player, too, as well. But uh, we're healthy. Uh, we'll get a little workout in here uh, f going forward. But uh, certainly excited about the uh, uh, the game, the opportunity. And, and uh, I know we're going to have a great crowd uh, support us as well. I know Arizona will have a lot of people here as well. So um, it's great to be here in San Diego. All right, well, we'll start with questions for Coach Dixon. Uh, Colin Post, TCU 360. Yes. Jamie, you guys only took 10 threes last night, I think, in the loss to Kansas State earlier this year took 28 and you kind of harped on that just how important is it for you guys to get good looks inside especially if you're not hitting behind the arc well I mean there's a balance we we, we never thought we were a team that's gonna be shooting a lot of threes and and um, that's uh, certainly uh, something I thought we did a really good job we got in the paint a lot last night uh, penetration we made really good decisions in the lane and I thought our interior passing was terrific so you know, constantly getting uh, – we, we've put a set number since uh, – I don't know, you, you brought up a loss, I guess, Colin, as, as you uh, 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 tend to. But uh, we, we, uh, we, um, we've we really emphasized more. We have these standards that we wanted uh, to reach in every game, and we added paint touches as one of those standards that we have to reach. And, and since that point, since that time – and uh, I don't know that it's uh, – I think it has had a positive effect on, on our offense and in those things, and we have improved offensively. So um, we want to be inside out. We've got great uh, penetration from our guards. Our guards really have the ability to get in inside, uh, get to the paint, and we want to constantly emphasize that. So uh, we recognize that. We've got to continue to do that and then continue to get the offensive rebounding uh, that we uh, have been so good at this year. So it's a big part of our offense. Jamie, Drew Davis, yes, for, former Star Telegram. Uh, Arizona, one of the top offenses in the country. Do they remind you, I guess KU statistically would mm -hmm. be the Big 12's best offense. Do they remind you of them? And kind of what are some of the keys to slowing them down? Yeah, I think they're unique. I mean, they're, they're two bigs. Uh, uh, they rotate those three guys. And it's, um, they're, they're, you know, that used to be a little bit more common than it is now. But uh, it's hard to find three really good skilled big guys, and they've got them. Um, Obviously, uh, internationally, uh, uh, international kids um, that have uh, gotten better. Um, uh, like I said, saw two of them play um, in over over in uh, uh, in Latvia uh, with that with that team played against uh, Bala, and um, obviously know his past at being a Gonzaga. So uh, they're they're really they're really skilled. Um, they're that makes them different. So I, I don't know that I think they're very uh, I think they're very. Uh, uh, dissimilar to really anybody. It's, it's a very uncommon uh, group out there now, um, what that they have, but yet they have good shooting, good spacing, well coached, good play, pace of play, 
um, and uh, and and depth. I mean, they're they're uh, they're great balance offensively. I think that's the biggest thing that stands out to me. They can score inside. Their bigs can play on the perimeter. They have good perimeter shooting, uh, but yet they can uh, get to the basket too from the, their their perimeter or their athleticism. So. Uh, it's obviously their numbers speak for themselves, and, and their balance, I think, is make, what makes them so good offensively. Certainly a, a challenge for us defensively. We've gone against some very good offensive teams, but this team is, uh, uh, as I said, a little bit different. But um, I, I know our guys are looking forward to the challenge. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe this is the sixth number one seed you'll face in a 10-week span. <laughs> two with Baylor, three with Kansas, now Arizona. Mm. Is it good because your guys are prepared to face the best? Is it bad mm. because you're battling against the best? Like, yeah, well, that's a that's a good stat. I knew it was something like that. I wouldn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to uh, look into uh, uh, totaling them up. But uh, uh, thanks for reminding us. Yeah, no. Um, I think that you know the, I, I've joked about the three uh, uh, Kansas games uh, in in the week or so. Uh, you know what we've seen, what we've gone through, and, and certainly the lack of uh, preparation, practice time, while other teams had time, uh, it, it was a unique setup uh, as well. But, uh, you know, we, we've been challenged. Uh, we know what we have to uh, do. We've been challenged in a unique way, too, unlike anybody else probably in the country. But um, we're, we're still showing up and, and uh, looking forward to the opportunity. But, yeah, I think there's a – we did beat Kansas at our place. Uh, we thought we could have won the game at our place. The Baylor game seemed like so they were so far away. Um, and, and I don't know that we're the team uh, now that we were then, so I look at it those ways. But, uh, yeah, there's, our league prepares us for these things. There's, there's no question about it, and uh, I, I think it's an advantage for us. I really do. Hey, Jamie. Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Hey, Joe. In the last six weeks or so, Mike has said that he's really turned his attention to focusing on what he can do as a defender rather than stressing about the offensive side of things. I guess, you know, obviously last night taking one shot, you know, going for one for one, but getting some charges and some blocks. What have you seen from him from a developmental standpoint this year? Micah? Micah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We, we always, Mike and Micah, we always, we, we run into that one uh, uh, a lot. But, um, uh, I mean, he's developed, he's progressed, you know, offensively, obviously, uh, as a kid we knew in high school and recruited heavily. Um, his developments, he's gotten better on the perimeter, he's gotten better offensively. They're, they're not, he's not where we know he's going to be. It's a process, but we're excited about him. I thought he was tremendous uh, yesterday. I mean, he, uh, we were just watching some of the clips. I mean, uh, his, point, his movement without the basketball. Um, he's one of our best defenders. You know, he was starting early in the year for us, and uh, you know, my my always has been my uh, uh, belief is to start the best defenders. And we just felt with the balance of our lineup, we need to get a little bit more shooting in there. And that's why we went Chuck. But we play them both together now, and uh, it gives us a lot of versatility. But I mean, he's he's progressing. He's getting better. I, I, I think he's going to have a great career. Um, he's a, he's a you know he's shooting threes now. I, I don't even think he thought about it in the past. And uh, we're just, just a, it's a process. But I really, he's, he, he was terrific. I thought he was terrific yesterday, how he played. Uh, he did, he made winning plays yesterday. Penetration, how we wanted him to do it. Good decisions, made some great passes. And um, ran the floor and, and really defended really well. So um, he's, he's a, a really a big asset for us. So we're, we're proud of uh, what he's become and what he's going to really become uh, down the road. Uh, Dane O'Neill at The yeah. Athletic. Jamie, when you were at Pitt, you, you predicated your team on blue-collar, nasty defense really being mm. kind of tough and blue, you know hard, mm. hard to play. How close is this team to kind of reaching that standard that you want to achieve? Yeah, it's kind of getting there. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, those, uh, and, but those were guys that were there three, four, five years. Um, it, it was a process. This has been unique. I mean, it's a different game, and we've adjusted. Uh, June 1st, we started practicing. We started working on our defensive philosophy, fundamentals, rules, all those things. So, um, so we're a work in progress. I, I, we're getting there. But, yeah, there, there's, uh, we had to get an element of phys physicality that I think we're lacking. Um, you know, and that only came from practicing, getting after it, which is something we couldn't do the, the last couple of years to some degree. Um, certainly more us more so than others. But, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, our league is – I mean, I, I, I think you're referring, Dana, to the, is it the pit thing. Our league has made it that way too. Our league – I don't know if it's uh, – I've uh, – because our league has almost become the Big East in, in, in what we're doing defensively and really what we're doing as far as ranking as a conference. 
uh, it's become that. So, you know, my joke, oh, I've used it, Drew is tired of it, but, you know, my goal is in my career is to coach in the toughest league in the country every year of my career, and uh, I, I've pretty much done that. Um, so uh, this league, I think, has had a lot to do with that as well. But you can't win without defense and rebounding. Um, we've evolved in how we – now, when I say that, we're doing it completely different. You know, we're guarding ball screens different. We're, we're, we're guarding – we're double teaming different. I mean, everything we're doing is different uh, according to how the game has changed. And, uh, and we've evolved offensively too as well. So um, it's fun. I mean, it's fun. You get to, you get to, you get to uh, uh, develop new things, play different ways, and play with different guys. And, and as the game changes, we change and adapt. And it's, it's been fun to co coach these guys and, and, and get better. And, and this week was crucial for us. You know, like I said, we didn't have any practices for about a month. And we had four practices this week, and that was a, that was a whole new experience for us. So we were able to adjust, do some things, uh, change some things around, and add some things. So that was that was a really a great four days for us. Uh, Jeff Wilson with Frogs Thanks. today. Uh, were were you able to watch any of the Baylor North Carolina game today? I, and, th and then, what do you think I'm about sorry. it? And can you say to your team, hey, number one teams can lose. Oh wow! Um, I, I w did watch it. I mean, yeah, we, you know, you say you're getting ready, you're getting ready, but we're eating breakfast. We turn the games on. The guys want to watch them, so I saw some of it, and then uh, I was watching. So um, I didn't see the I didn't see the whole thing, and I, I was I still don't believe they said they were up 25 and, and came back. So someone's gonna have to verify it for me, but uh, I guess it did happen. Um, you know. Uh, um, I guess I'll, I'll use that, Jeff, if you don't mind me borrowing it from you. But uh, I hadn't even thought of it in those terms. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I can use it. I, I think I think we're not. Um, again, based on what, what who we played against, uh, the one seeds we've played against, I, I think we we believe it can be we can win the game. I, I, th I I'm I'm sure you've talked to the players and they think they can win. And so uh, um, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with their philosophy. Alex Coyle, Arizona PBS. Yes. Um, all four teams that are playing on Sunday have traveled well in terms of their fan base. Coach Lloyd just uh, kind of challenged his fan base to be energetic on Sunday. What environment are you expecting? Well, this is kind of a new thing for us. So, um, you know, we've, uh, uh, but we have so many people down from this area. Uh, you know, this is a big part of our uh, school. I don't know a lot of people know that, but we get a lot of our students from California, especially Southern California. Um, I know I'll have a lot of friends there, high school buddies. Uh, so that's a, um, that's a, a, that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, it's it's certainly I think something to, to a challenge for us. Obviously, we know the um, I don't I I coach at Northern Arizona. I, I I live in Flagstaff, so I know the the Phoenix to the Tucson to Phoenix, the Phoenix to two, the San Diego trip is uh, a regular occurrence in the summer. So. Uh, uh, I, I know it's it's normal to be traveling this way, and and it's always been a history of playing. So, but it's uh, for us, we're gonna have a lot of people here, and and, and we have a lot of uh, alumni in the San Diego area, in the Orange County out of this, South Orange County, and uh, even from my area in the Valley. So, my friends will be here, my sister will be here, my parents won't be here, but um, um, they'll be watching. So, we'll be all right. A couple on this side. Mm. Uh, Colin Post, TCU 360. Jamie, uh, Mike mentioned him last night a little bit, and you kind of mentioned you saw Benedict Matherin this summer yeah. in U19. Just obviously a, a potential lottery pick, according to a lot of people. What makes him so effective, and what do you guys think you have to do to slow him down tomorrow? Yeah, we played against him uh, in, in the game, um, and, and uh, yeah, Mike and I were talking about that uh, yesterday, last night. But um, um, I think I mentioned here, I can't remember, if, but – you know, we, we uh, a number of their guys were, were playing in that in that tournament on, on obviously other 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 countries, but um, he was um, uh, very athletic. It was it was a heck of a game. Um, I know we got off early. They came back a little bit uh, on it, and 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 we yeah, got off to a good lead. But uh, he's certainly very talented. It seems like he's a guy that was kind of uh, coming into his own. I think that tournament was big for him in, in his. Uh, uh, um, in, in his development, uh, uh, look, you know, watching from afar. Uh, and that did, you know, it was big for Mike, too. It was big for a lot of the guys. You see, like, a, a Johnny Davis at Wisconsin, what he's done. Kalk Brenner, until his injury, I hope he's okay, Ryan. 
Um, but it, it's amazing doing it twice and, and to see what that tournament does to some guys and the confidence that exists. When you go and play against the best players in the world, that's a that's a unique opportunity. When you have success, I think it's it's springboard. You just, and, and I've seen that a lot, whether it be Clay Thompson and Gordon Hayward. We had the uh, uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, whatever, and I did it. But uh, uh, it's been great for Mike. He, he's, a, he's a talent. He's athletic. He's long. I think his shooting's improved. Um, and uh, uh, he certainly, you know, you can see it. You can see uh, glimpses of it. But, uh, uh, you know, it is amazing to see all the, how, how great all those players are doing in, 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 in uh, college basketball today. Drew Davison for Star Telegram. Kind of going off that, Jamie, you guys built a winning roster, won the gold medal, but Dale and Terry tried out, mm -hmm. uh, didn't make it. How tough was that, just cutting that roster to 17? Yeah, well, um, well we did it, uh, I guess, 12. But, again, it's um, the coaches don't make that decision. They, they have a, a committee that does that. So, um, you know, I mean uh, – I think you know we. I think we played against a bunch of guys this year uh, uh, in that situation. But um, he um, uh, talented, athletic. Uh, I know. Um, uh, kind of, uh, we had Holmgren, we had Baldwin, we had uh, all these guys. Um, but uh, again, it's a it's a it's a challenge. Um, I guess you're trying to start some controversy, Drew. But uh, uh, I'm not going to fall in the trap. So. Uh, um, we're we're gonna um, we're gonna I respect every guy out there, but ultimately it wasn't my decision. They have a committee and they do that for for people like you. <laughs> uh, Troy Hirsch to here. protect us. Uh, Troy Hirsch from Fox Five San Diego. Two questions for you, Coach. First, what would uh, for an alumni and a coach, what would a win tomorrow mean for you and this program that's never made it to the Sweet Sixteen? Um, progress. I mean, uh, again, I. I think I know people thought I was crazy for coming here, but uh, I believed in it, and they believed in me. So, you know, you got a chance who believes in you and an administration that does. So, it's a good thing. And uh, but I believe in the university. I thought we could get it to where where uh, uh, it could be uh, proud of its basketball program, and 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 we've done that. We did that in pretty quick turnaround. But um, the, uh, there's there's work to be done. So that would be another step. So uh, it may, I think it would mean a lot to our people and I think uh, to our university. And, uh, um, you know, I think it would, it may, it would mean uh, – it probably means a little more to a guy that went to the school there and has seen the struggles over the years. I think, I think so. I think, uh, you know, I've heard that things like we weren't even, uh, you know, getting the NCAA tournament. We weren't even getting the NIT or the other tournaments. I mean, like, uh, if they go to the, the, the history of it, they, they talk about the 20 years or 30 years or what. But – when you could buy yourselves into the NIT, we weren't getting in. So I mean, uh, um, we uh, we've we've come a long way, and um, you know we're proud of it, and okay. we're winning games. And uh, uh, it's 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 uh, I'm just excited. That our fans are excited, and the crowds we had were tremendous. Our students are getting behind it. You know, we have a, a alumni that really didn't go to basketball games. Um, you know, all those years. In Arizona, it's just you know it's ingrained. It's been that way for you know since Coach Olson, and. Uh, for us, it's a new thing, and um, you know that's that's uh, that's what's fun to see the students going to, to the games and and uh, uh, making it a part of their experience. And, and take two more questions. And speaking of alumni, uh, coach, uh, certain running back had a pretty good career here mm -hmm. in San Diego. I wonder has he reached out to you at all? Or oh yeah, he was at our last uh, wedding. Brian was he at the? I didn't even know he was there, and and the players all knew he was. We had a um, uh, we uh, was on the board today. Uh, uh, he was he was at the game, but LT um, uh, spoke to uh, our group. He didn't he hasn't spoke to the, you know COVID kind of is kind of bringing people in to speak and stuff. It hasn't been quite the same. But um, I told him the story this year, and that's why they used the saying. He uh, uh, he spoke to a group a couple of years back uh, to our team, and he talked about being at TCU, always having a chip on your shoulder, and it never leaves you. And that's what he had coming from University High in Waco. When he went to TCU, and then he continued to have when he's at the uh, 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 when he was with the Chargers, and um, so, and I say even now he wants to be the best you know TV guy he possibly can. So, um, you know that that chip uh, on our shoulder never leaves us. And and the players I guess have told the media the phrase, and they they uh, I said you guys know who he is right, and they and and they said uh, yeah no we saw him walk in the game the other day. So they, they they know who he is, and uh, you forget how young you are. But yeah, he uh, 
Yeah, San Diego uh, uh, LT is a, is, a, is, a, is a special connection between the two. So a lot of connections for us. Brian Esper, TCU Sports Network. Coach, early in the season, you, you hinted that you had the ability to play two big men on the floor at the same time. You talked about the potential of that if you needed to. Mm -hmm. Will this game warrant that maybe for the first time? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. We haven't done it much. And we've practiced it a lot, I should say. Um, but I just don't see how we take a, a, a manual Micah, um, Jacoby off the floor. I, I mean, J Manuel's probably our, our best rebounder, um, uh, one of our best. Uh, Jacoby, I thought, played really well yesterday, really good defensively, and he has a knack for rebounding. He's just, uh, I think he's just uh, uh, getting better and better. Micah, we like having on the floor. So I think our strengths and our quickness. And um, with that said, I think Xavier and, uh, and, and, and uh, Eddie and, and, and Suley give us a, a great combination in there. But um, it's a possibility. We, we practice it all, all the time, more so out of necessity because we have enough guys. Uh, so Xavier does play together with Eddie some uh, and, and did it a lot this past week because we were able to practice some. So we have done it plenty in practice, but we haven't done it in game, to be quite honest. All right, two questions left, sorry. Uh, one there and uh, then the front row. Melissa Trebowasser, Melissa. Frogs Today. Hi. Uh, you talk about rebounding, and it's obviously been such a huge part of wins and, and losses for TCU this season. But Arizona is statistically the best rebounding team that you've faced. Um, mm. You know, whether it's using two bigs, whether it's getting more out of your guards, is there a strategy difference here, or is it just effort? Yeah, no. I mean, it's it's um, you know, I, we we've em you can't emphasize it any more than we do start this week. I mean, we it's it's uh, it's we start every day with it, and we end every day with it. So. Um, rebounding is a, is a group thing. It's a, it's a team thing. It's all five. Uh, one of our strengths, I think, is that we're getting the, the rebounding, our guards rebound at a high clip. And uh, but they're big across the board. There's no question about it. it it's a, it is. A, we've made it pretty clear. We're, we're not winning unless we out, out rebound them. So um, I think that's uh, incentive enough, or uh, uh, is uh, pretty clear. They they understand the value of Melissa and. and um, uh, it's good to see it too, by the way. You don't know, come to Texas anymore, but uh, um, yeah, no, I, I've heard about it. Just somebody mentioned it uh, once, but um, uh, certainly, um, uh, I you know we, we got to win the battle. It's it's that simple. We had to win against Seton Hall, who was a very good rebounding team, and we won by 13. So we know we we've we've, uh, we've We've seen it. We've got that. Uh, uh, we keep track every time out. They know exactly where we are on the rebounding totals. So we make it very clear to them. That's not going to change. Justin Spears from the Arizona Daily Star. Yes. Coach, in 2009, you were rumored to be a candidate for the Arizona job. What do you remember just about that whole experience? And what made the job interesting for you? Uh, that was a long time ago. I've been a rumor for a lot of jobs. I don't know. Uh, half of them I don't even know about. So that's, uh, that's uh, in, in, intriguing. But. Um, you know, I, I grew up. Uh, um, the, I, the only thing I know about, I, I would coach in Northern Arizona for four years. Uh, unbelievable experience. Uh, coach Howland uh, and I, and uh, were there, and I was his assistant. And um, uh, but really, the thing really uh, with U of A is is uh, um, is um, uh, Coach Olson. You know, uh, I came out of high school. I was a senior uh, when he got the job, and and. Uh, um, but then watching what he did and what he built and, and all those guys and, and then uh, seeing him, um, what he became. And then I got to know him uh, through coaching at NAU and he became a mentor really to me. He's, he's very, very special. My wife and, um, uh, and, and I became very close with him and, and uh, his family. And, and uh, it, just, uh, it, it, it just, I think uh, anybody following him was going to be uh, uh, take. I, that's what I do remember. I remember anybody following the guy, that guy, what he did to that program is is uh, it's going to be an immense challenge. But the uh, resources are unbelievable, and uh, but you know it's always a job that uh, uh, or a school or a program that I've just watched from afar because I uh, Coach Olson was was to me the uh, did the most unbelievable work that's. Uh, uh, been done in college basketball. I think what he did at U of A and what he built the following was just amazing. And uh, he, he's a mentor, and, and I, I cherish every moment with him. 
We used to do Nike trips and, and clinics, and I did a lot of different things with him. And uh, he just he just meant a lot to me and my family and my wife. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. See you all tomorrow.